Again, after further review, we said, let's run them again. Ryan Turk, Connor Shanahan. Look at that. I mean, Ryan Turk just turning 40 earlier this week. Shanahan, you know, so new power plant for Ryan Turk. He's gone six cylinder now. Shanahan, he's in a very proven car with RCP behind the wheel. He gave him the keys to that. So give modern tell. We're about to see if Connor Shanahan can do it. Here we go. Ryan Turk, Rainex Toyota, GR Corolla on Nitto tires. Shanahan, Red Bull Garage, to BMW. Ryan Turk initiates into that first outside zone. Let's see if he can get out there. And yes, he does. He gets definitely close. Doesn't tap his bumper, but that's, a, that's okay. We're not looking for him to essentially tap. Out to outside zone three. That's where we saw the incident earlier. Looks like we got definitely a sterile and clean run right now. Oh, textbook. Shanahan wow. did tap that inside clip, but a good run from both the drivers. Pretty straight up. Pretty yeah. straight up. No, no crazy incidents like we saw in their first battle. What, what's amazing is how Ryan Turk has already adapted and changed from the last run. So Ryan Turk was very aggressive, and that incident at three is kind of part of that. So look at big initiation there. Connor Shanahan dives right into the pocket, but Turk knows I'm just going to graze my bumper. That's how precise these drivers are at this point. Shanahan dives into that pocket, very James Dean-esque. Then they transition to the touch and go, and Turk gets a really, really good lead on him. But Shanahan starts to close in as they come around the cliff. There's really only small parts here, but look at the angle that comes out of Ryan Turk. Full lock all the way through three. And like, you see that counter. The wheels did not move. He uh, was locked and loaded. And, and, you know, Connor talked about his brother getting his ear. He's like, he's on rails. You're yeah. going to need to give it to him. Give it the beans. Get up get, get up on his side. There we got RCP, Charpentier, and uh, his pops there. And, uh, again, you can see the garagistic, you know, that, that team there cheering him on. So here we are. Now let's... Let's, uh, let's switch up the order here, and uh, Shanahan will be leading. Seeing some wiper blades, so I don't know oh, if this no, is no. A, a sign oh. of, of something else going oh, on. Wow, but. yeah, I'm seeing some, uh, some ponchos come out for Drizzle. We are in Long Beach. That's why Snoop Dogg carries an umbrella for Drizzle. So we got RCP looking on. Let's hear noise. I hear noise. They're coming down somewhere. All right, so Rome uh, looking on here. And we are sending cars. So, yeah, we are. I mean, ironically, it's Rain-X. So hopefully he's got the Rain-X on the windshield and the Rain-X wiper blades. This could shake things up quite a bit. This is the first time we're seeing moisture on track. This could really change the game right now. But you need to stay composed. And Irish drivers know how to drive in the wet. Bro, he goes oh. deep. Goes deep into the wall. The hatch opens on Ryan Turk. Shanahan goes hard into it. This is what I was talking about. You know, they went from dry, absolutely dry, bone dry, to just a little bit of moisture. Ryan Turk's front left corner is absolutely dipped down. The trunk opens. Look at that, that front left suspension. That thing has absolutely collapsed there. The trunk opened. Oh, what a bummer here. You know, here, here we are. And again, just that little, just that little bit of just I call it aggressive talking. That you know, when we talk to somebody, they get aggressive, start spitting at you. Yeah. That's what. That's what it's just barely the finest of rain. What a bummer. Now, obviously, both drivers experiencing the same conditions uh, when it comes to that run. Uh, both guys went into outer zone one pretty quick. A lot of speed. So we'll see here in the replay. Big swing initiation there from Connor Shanahan. And we see him extend out. He gets back on the power. And Turk is already shallow. And you can see Connor almost using. <laughs> the front end of Turk to keep the car in line. That's just an interesting case. So it's almost, I would not say a roll reversal, but we saw the contact at that outside zone three when Turk was in the lead. But here's Shanahan. He's going in really hard and it's slick. It fought back and looks like Turk did straighten him out. He could have countered. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. I mean, what would have happened if Turk wasn't as aggressive as he was? Uh, but at the end of the day, both drivers on the same course, essentially on the same line here. And you can see right here, this is where they both kind of realize what's going on. And we cut power, and then Shanahan throws a bunch of angle to slow the car down. So does Turk. But then Shanahan tapping the wall, getting the car swung back out, hits the front end of Turk. It's, as you said, it's not a complete roll reversal, but it, it definitely has some shades. Yeah, in. so again, the Rockstar Energy Drink pilot, Ryan Turk, Goes hard to the wall. He comes to a halt. This is a uh, the plot thickens. You know we we thought we were gonna get something straight up. We saw the ponchos come out and the rain showed up. We're still seeing smoke on parts of the course here too. I mean there's definitely still some dry and then we get in through outside zone three where it looks like it's getting a little bit more damp. So 
I think uh, race control right now is going to start looking at what our options are. But at the end of the day, Ryan Turk did take a big hit. Connor Shanahan did take a big hit. But one of them drove off. The other one's getting onto a tow truck. Yeah, here we are already seeing Ryan Turk analyze, see what's going on. Judges taking a look, different angles. You can see Turk already talking about it, like, all right, what do we do? What do we got? And that's, you know, just having, having that awareness. All right. Well, when we come back, we'll find out what transpires here. Rome Charpentier. You can see the international symbols for drifting as they use their hands. That, it's getting yeah. pitted. All right. So there we got Ryan Turk still on track. See if we can get him towed off. See what happens. And we, we're, we're waiting for the verdict. And here we go. Slide him left for Turk, right for Shanahan. Looks like Ryan Turk gets one. Two, so look at that. Ryan Turk gets the win. So after much deliberation, interesting change of pace. Shanahan, after the 32, was in it. But after the second run, Ryan Turk gets break almost on purpose to save other parts, right? You have a weak link somewhere, so that way you don't take out the entire subframe or steering rack. So hopefully it breaks where it should have broken. You can see a bit of a rundown here. So Odie Bakshi is 40 years old. Brandon Sorensen, 19. Yep. So yeah, this is this is what drifting is now, right? We've got these big age gaps, but both drivers with <laughs> equal well with equal ability. Yeah, the car shows uh, shows no gender, shows no age. Nope. It's a uh, run what you brung, a thousand horsepower on average from all these cars. So here we go. Odie Bakshi's will lead. Brandon Sorensen will give chase. That field suspension. GT Radio Enos Oil S15. There it goes, flapping the hood, but. Uh, Slap in the wall, keeps it just barely nicking that. Really well done there by Odie Bakshi. But Brandon Sorensen, he's tucked in. We've seen a lot of smoke, and that's a good indication that, you know, ideally, rain stay away. Everybody say a prayer here and brings it around. Great lead run by Odie Bakshi, especially just barely that smooch on that wall. Just a nice little dab. And then Brandon Sorensen was just tucked in. Oh, so nicely. Yeah, Odie Bakshi's straight line approach on his initiation gets out there, adds a little bit more throttle to get the rear end out to the first outside zone. Could have been a little bit deeper on the second outside zone, and Brandon Sorensen actually goes deeper than Odie on outside zone three. Through the touch and go to set them up to the inner clip. You can see Brandon offline just ever so slightly in comparison to what Odie had run. So, yeah, Odie basically comes in a lot of different ways to initiate to get the car sideways. You can kind of swing it back and forth, use some weight transfer, clutch kick, handbrake, lots of different ways, but Odie goes very cool, calm, and collective, and, and just knows where he wants to put the car. Uh, yep. I mean, he's an absolute master when it comes to the lead, and he's a complete demon in the chase. So we're going to swap him around and then be able to see what, what Odie's got when he's following. Yeah, and Odie has just really just leveled up as far as his his chasing driving. Like, he just he's just so, he's one, he's simpatico with his car. You know, just given given the S chassis, you know, I mean, they've just progressed that chassis over and over. I mean, S15s are, you know, I mean, you look at Dai Oshihara, he won in a, what, 30-year-old 30, 30 car when yeah. he won the championship in the S13. So, you know, it just, just goes to show you sometimes you can't, uh, you can't teach an old dog some new tricks. <laughs> All right, Brandon Sorensen, United States Air Force, BMW. He's on those NK wheels. Here we go. Initiating into that first outside zone. Looks like Odie dives in. He gets really aggressive on that line, but he's trying to set himself up there. See that? You saw him just transition, and that got him right to where he needed to be. Brandon Sorensen really deep in that third outside zone. Out to the touch and go goes both the drivers. And look at Odie Bakshi's. Wow. So, and that's what I'm talking about. That anticipation that Odie has, again, it goes compromises the line deep on outside zone one to set himself up for kind of the X factor. You know, we're not kind of using that term, the X factor anymore, because obviously qualifying, but he stuck it right there to him. Watch the transition. Yeah, Odie really anticipates the way that Brandon's going to initiate. And you can see Brandon could have been a little deeper through one, but then Odie is so close, it tears his bumper off. And then watch the angle that Brandon pours into three. Now, he's a little bit late getting into three. He doesn't fill the zone completely. And then once we get to that touch and go, Odie just reels him in, holds him, like basically holds his wheel to the door through the rest of the run. So, you know, uh, Odie's, Odie's spotter is his wife, Amy, and you know she told him, okay, he's gonna swing out on initiation, hold back, and then from there, Odie's just got it. And uh, yeah, it's incredible. They're so close that he's able to just take his bumper off. I think it just comes down to just, again, the anticipation. That's the word that just keeps coming to my mind as far as, 
expecting and knowing and and, have, and the reason that he can do that is because he knows Brandon Sorensen is 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 a trustworthy a trustworthy driver. Shanahan watching from the sides. Uh, unfortunate turn of events there for him, but we'll see. He's going to cheer on RCP. You know, I mean, like you said, it was it was a childhood dream of his to drift here at Formula Drift. He went once and twice against Ryan Turk, but right now it's all about Odie Bakshi's getting the win over Brandon Sorensen. Brandon Sorensen. Just love the way he's progressing as a driver. Unfortunately, just going against Odie, just that chase run was just really, really impressive. Yeah, leads were pretty equal. I mean, uh, it was yeah. really cool to see what Brandon was able to do through outside zone three. I think if he got into the zone a little bit earlier, that could have helped, but uh, we move on. Here we are, Kazuya Taguchi versus Hiroya Manoa, 31 and 14 years old. So Manoa, a Formula Drift Japanese runner up in the FD Japan series. And uh, he is coming here as a rookie, 14 years old. Simulator is his friend. Had to get like parents and school permission to come over here from Japan. And Kazuya Taguchi, you know, I mean, like you said, they're practically the same car. Yeah. You know, VR, Jerry Yang, you know, I mean, they've, they've really developed uh, Kazuya's car. You know, Kazuya just got better and better. He ran an R35 and then went to the S15. I thought that was great, but in the 86, just got better and better and eventually got that win. And then Manoa getting that, that win yesterday overall with the seeding brackets that put him into the number one spot of the bottom eight, you know, the 25th, it's a high seeding qualifier coming in. And uh, this is, there are no sight, sight laps, just yep. FYI. We're, we're dry now. We're, yep, we are, we are dry, so we are going for it. So Taguchi will lead, Manoa will give chase. Matt Sopa on the line, make sure the cameras are rolling. Get all the action here, courtesy of GoPro, and again, be sure to check out that Hero 15 Black. And here we are in the Royal Purple Top 16. Here we go, Toguchi slowly crawling through that start chicane. I think we're gonna see a pretty aggressive battle here, Jacob. Here we go, Kazuya Toguchi, Manoa drops into formation. Manoa doesn't get exactly all the way out, but now Manoa drops in that spot. Ooh, Toguchi backs it in. Almost breaking a taillight there. We'll take a look at that. But oh, Manoa straightens out. A big correction there from Manoa. Taguchi, let's let's take a look at this again. Did you see how deep Taguchi went? And then that might have thrown off Manoa. Yeah, I think Manoa got completely lost in the smoke coming out of outside zone three. So you can see here Taguchi, not a huge flick initiation. So driving in America is kind of starting to take that big flick initiation. He started his career in FD with. But he does a really good job through one, could have been deeper in two. Manoa scrubbing a bit of angle, and you can see there a bit of a tap, and then Manoa completely lost in the smoke. When you're transitioning through there, if you don't get through that smoke quick, you're not going to see anything, and that's no. exactly what happened here. Right. Manoa got completely lost. But good initiation, good, you know, the, the handbrake pull wasn't super long. Good job through one, could have been slightly deeper. Two definitely could have been a little bit deeper there. And then as we get into three, you can see he just drives that car out. There was a slight contact with Manoa and Taguchi. Oh yeah, he totally like, got lost. Oh yeah, he's nothing. You're not seeing anything. It's like driving in a blizzard, but you know, you got a thousand horsepower and yeah, not an easy one. Oh, look at this, Shanahan and Turk. So we're going to be swapping this back around, and we've got uh, Manoa out in front now. I, I'm expecting a nice feint initiation here, a big flick, something like that. You can start to see some of the Japanese influence, but Manoa adapts very quickly, so you may not see it in this case. You may go with a more straight line approach, but nope, there it is. There's the here big we go. Flick. All right, Manoa and that Juku Racing Cusco GT Radio 86, and oh, look at that angle, Kazuya Taguchi. That allows it. Looks like he kind of checked up a little bit, and Taguchi backs down. Now into that. Oh, wow, that oh, was oh. that was Chef's kiss. Where's Federico with his Italian hand gesture? Oh. Kazuya banging doors, banging bumpers. Oh. Down. Whoa, doctor. All right. Well, guess what? Jerry Yang's team's going to be busy regardless of who gets the win. Oh. What? And I, I, I mean, look, you're at a D cell. You're allowed it to slow down. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm just going to call it Kazuya Taguchi's at fault right there. That, like, you know. Right. I mean, he just one, two, bang, bang, like. Yeah. So, like I said, big Japanese flick there. It's what, I mean, you see this a lot at the drivers out of Japan, but holds outer one for a ton of time, holds two for a ton of time. Then we get into three, super deep, tons of angle, and now you see Kazuya having to surge a little bit, tries to grip the car, but get one contact, two contact, three contacts. 
Yeah. And you can see it was, it was basically that front wheel on front wheel that ended up causing the spin. So judges wise, we have to start looking at a bunch of different variables. How long they made it through the run, how good was each lead, how good was each chase. Obviously Manoa having a big error in the chase before, but there was a bigger, or I mean, arguably bigger error, <laughs> error from Taguchi, but it was near the end of the run. Was it across the line? This is where we start to get into a lot of finessing. So judges are discussing it right now. Uh, we do have provisions for a one more time, but the idea of that one more time is if the run was an 85 or above. So if it, to, to put it into perspective, it was a really good run, we run it one more time. Right. If there were errors, we're not going to run it one more time. We don't. You don't want to see a you know a bad battle twice. Although this was not a bad battle. This was crazy. Yeah. No. It was. It was good. But I got to tell you, you know, just Kazuya, if he, if he pedaled back just a little bit there, yeah. I, I think that he might have done well. And again, just kind of digesting both. And also, you got to think about the team here, man. You right. know, like here here we are. Like I said, one way or the other, the Jerry Yang camp is going to have to work on one of the cars. Here, here's the thing, though. You are chasing behind. You see a guy throwing a ton of angle at every zone, holding like holding that angle and that line the entire time. You get into the last zone, you're like, I got to do something. The little dominance there? Yeah, I think I think Manoa hold my pocket. Taguchi a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I yeah. really do. I think I think Taguchi kind of had to wake up and go, oh, wow, like this kid's doing some crazy stuff. So here is our Air Force replay side by side. You can see the difference in the driving just with the angle. When they're putting angle on, when they're not, Taguchi puts in angle later on, and that's what causes the issue with Manoa, whereas Manoa is putting the angle on very early in that zone. So it's kind of interesting to understand that Taguchi's driving style has adapted more to the American style, yeah. whereas Manoa, he's all Japanese. That big, that big J style. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of big sweepy thing. And, it, you know, yeah, it's it's interesting. And again, Manoa had that major mistake. I don't I don't care who you are. You know, you're gonna you're gonna bathe in smoke. And Manoa being right hand drive, he was just right there. His cabin was getting filled. So here we go. Slide him left for Taguchi or right for Manoa. Looks like Manoa gets one, a two, wow. and there it is. Hiroya Manoa. Oh, it wasn't unanimous. Okay. It was not unanimous. So that was Reese Marin there going with uh, right. Reese went with it one more time. Yeah, Reese went with it one more time. All right, so Manoa gets the victory. He advances on. So when we come back, don't go anywhere. We got some uh, more in that AutoZone Mustang RTR Spec 5 FD and then the Cadillac XLR of Jonathan Hurst. Let's see what Hurst has got for us. Caddy Daddy and going against James the Machine Dean. James Machine Dean enters in. And again, James, you know what? Oh, and look oh. At that. as Jonathan Hurst spins out, James Dean, if he continues on, will have a major advantage here. Oh, oh no! Saves it. Saves it, but that is going to be a, a two independent incidents. So basically, it's going to default to this next run because both of them had mistakes. You know, was was that the right approach? I mean, we're seeing a, a ton of smoke. There's a, I, There's I a lot some, of smoke here. I think some machismo got in the way of this. But you know what? I mean, look, like I said, the Irish drivers, they know how to drive in the rain. Ireland has a lot of rain, so they know what to do. But what did yeah. you see? Hurst had a really good initiation, but it looks like James was really able to hold on to it a lot longer. And I don't know if Jonathan was quite prepared for it. And then as we come through here, wow, the moment James Dean comes off the throttle, that car snaps back. So very him, him and Him and that, sorry to cut you off, him and that portion of the track. Yeah. Have a very ill, a, ill communication over here. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird relationship that's going on. But it looks like we are getting word here. There's going to be a, a timeout called five minutes for for James Dean. So it seems like there might have been a mechanical. Something's going on. I mean, as a reminder, they had to rebuild that car. Oh, yeah. I mean, Let's see if we get a clean start here. They took that sight lap. I wonder if they, what they learned. You know, still seeing. Uh, here we go, initiating. So there's the smoke. That's good. That's a sign of a good time. Frederick Osbo getting all the way out there. Beach him. Tried to get close, had to back off a little bit there. Yeah, that trunk, that trunk flapping a little bit there in the wind. Watch this transition into that last inside clip. Ooh, beach wow, him. There we go. Oh, we got contact, kids. That back right exploded off of Osbo. Beecham took that as a collectible. Yeah, Beecham got aggressive, and that thing just shredded like a pinata. All right, so bit of a faint initiation there from Osbo. Nice and early as he pushes out to the first outside zone. Great job through there. Very calm and collected, very smooth. This is almost robotic. We're back to seeing Osbo the way that he won his championships. But 
Beecham behind him, very aggressive, darting around a little bit here and there. And then we see that bit of a tap, taking off the side skirt, exploding that fender. I love seeing Frederick Osbo back in form. This is how he won these championships. He takes the necessary risks, but doesn't go crazy. And that is how, that consistency is what afforded him these championships. And Trent Beecham, very aggressive behind him. You know, it's it's tough to keep up with those Nittos. It's tough to keep up with any Papadakis vehicle, but Beecham was right there in the fight. Yeah, he, he really was. And, and you said it earlier, the robot. Yeah. You know, that just, I remember when he was just hitting his stride, he was just unflappable, man. Just could absolutely never get shaken and was just unstoppable. Put the car in the right places, minimal corrections with those front wheels. It was just, you know, I, I'm sure, I'm sure that's, that's what he wants. Yeah. And Beecham, I mean, really, you know, since Utah of last year is starting to come into his own, he was, uh, people forget how incredible he was in Pro 2, brought the Mustang. Yep. You know, honestly, that, that Mustang coming into Pro was a little bit difficult. It, it wasn't quite up to, you know, basically what the Just standard Just of caliber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a good idea to get his feet wet in the series, builds the BMW, runs into some weird issues, yep. and then Utah, it all clicked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I saw him in practice. I kind of called it out early, and we're, we're really seeing Trenton Beecham now in Pro comfortable program is great. The Nexons are, are coming into their own. I was trying to pry to see if they changed the compound because they seem faster yeah. than they have before. And uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what Trent Beecham is able to, to put together over the next couple of years. Absolutely. I think he's, you know, he had that, he had that engine in a Ford Mustang, which was such a, oh, uh, such like a right. taboo thing. I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, but now I, th I think this fits. And as we keep talking about these BMW chassis and their suspension. So, all right. Well, uh, as we're about to get ready here, quick hit down to you, Lorette Nickel. You got James Dean down there. Uh, I wanted to talk to Vaughn. Why did James come in? Um, we've been, since uh, repairing his car, we've been chasing a ghost in it. Uh, we've had an intermittent uh, situation where the car cuts off. Um, it's happened, that would be the third time that it's happened in like in probably 12 or 13 laps since we got the car back out here. So it's very scarce that it happens. Um, and there's no data, no like smoking gun as to why. So uh, the team's been you know, doing their best they can to diagnose it. Uh, we obviously can't go out and practice to like replicate it and like really diagnose it. So um, we're just uh, hoping for the best. And uh, <laughs> frankly, I'm hoping that our testing that uh, we've been, that has been thrown at us all week, uh, <laughs> making us, making us, uh, you know, confirm that we really want to be here. <laughs> um, I hope that's over now. So uh, James is on fire and, you know, he can jump in and make it happen. And uh, we just need to give, give, him, give him the Mustang to do it. And uh, unfortunately, we've been having a couple challenges since uh, our, all week, really. Vaughn, thank you for the insight. Jared? Thank you so much, Lorette. Some good insight there from Vaughn. You can hear him just, yep, this, that. And just, you know, it's, it's, it's been a treacherous week for the RTR camp. You just see it, like you said, the ghost just yeah. lingering, just haunting them. So, well, we're finding out that Osbo wants to inspect his car. Let's take a look at it. So he heads back to the pits. You can see Beecham headed back as well. So we'll take a short break and don't go anywhere. Some more action continues here. We saw the first into outside zone one. James Dean continued on outside zone three. Bloop, he spun as well. So bloop, gee, here we go. Mr. Cool, that Cadillac. Driven by Jonathan Hurst, this rat -a tat tat machine going against that three-time champ as Jonathan Hurst uses all the cores, ping pongs his way. Mr. Cool on Kenneth Tires and James Dean continues on. What a solid lead run by Jonathan Hurst going after a three-time champ oh. and James Dean fights back. But I'll tell you what, Hurst put it on the wall without touching it. I mean, you could put a sheet of paper between that caddy's rear end and the wall. I mean, that was unbelievable. Uh, just under that pressure, new car for him, same loud and proud engine, but the pride of Paducah really showed up, Jacob. Yeah, I mean, right from initiation on, you knew this was gonna be wild. It looked like he was gonna crash in outer zone one. Late transfer into outer zone two, basically pair, like perpendicular to the wall through two and at the end of three, lines it up perfectly for the touch and go. Swings the back end around and through the inner clip. I mean, bes and, and then, I mean, on James's end, phenomenal job in the chase there. I don't know if he was expecting Jonathan to take off like a rocket, but James is able to hold on to it. Not quite as deep as Jonathan is, but not super expected to be. I mean, in the chase, you want to mirror it. 
but wow, wow. The only spot that James Dean showed any bit of, of you know, uh, of need for improvement is just through that inner clip, and that's pretty much it, so. Super. That was impressive, man. That that looked so good. I mean, I think I saw you throw your pen down. Yeah. That's a testimonial to just how close he was to that wall. That looked really sensational. It was clean. It was tidy. But you got to now take into consideration what happened on that first battle right. with James Dean. You know, Jonathan spun first, James Dean, separate inc incidents. And then as sensational as that lead run was, you know, we're kind of focusing on that because here he is. That's, you know, that's a giant. That's It is what it is. So. Very, uh, very interesting there for uh, for Hurst and, of course, for James Dean. I think both drivers need to be incredibly happy with their performance there. I mean, that was that was nuts. That was world class driving from both drivers, and right. especially for you know Jonathan Hurst getting into that new chassis. There's so many, so many different things when it comes to that Cadillac than what came from the BMW. Here we go, James Dean, Jonathan Hurst. One more, and there it is. One more time. Oh. And Reese Marin says he went with Jonathan Hurst, so. So as we saw, there we go, two to one. Jonathan Hurst got to one of the judges going his way. The needle was gone, but that will be a one more time between Hurst and James Dean. So here we are. Trend Beecham, Frederick Osbo. The second half of this battle, Beecham will lead, and Osbo giving chase. If you can remember, Beecham was aggressive, ripped off that back right fender of Freddy's Toyota Supra, that rock star vehicle. Beecham now out front. Transition into that second outside zone. Comes up a little bit short, but Frederick Osbo, that's what we we're talking about. Beecham looking really wound up right now. He is just fiery. And Osbo, oh. really good chase job, but Beecham, you know, I, I, I really liked what he did. He, his, he was really fluid from outside zone one to two, and then when he went into outside zone three, could not shake Osbo, and that's, he needed to do that, just given how aggressive Beecham was. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, Beecham very, very aggressive on initiation. You can see how perpendicular he is there. Does not get all the way out to outside zone one, kind of gets in there a bit late. Has about a foot and a half off outside zone two, and then as they come through three, you can see he holds onto it almost a little bit too long. Thankfully, Osbo was able to more or less anticipate that. And I love this shot here because you can see how parallel they are coming through. Now, focusing a bit more on Osbo's chase here, he could have been in a little bit deeper. He does follow back a little bit um, just so that way those transitions are a little bit easier. But you can see how Osbo is kind of trying to anticipate what Beecham is going to do. Beecham didn't have a perfect lead run. Uh, but Osbo was able to more or less get in and out of the spots that he needed to be to ensure that there was no contact, but he still had an active chase. Wasn't super, super close to him, but uh, I mean, he did everything he needed to do in the chase at that point. Yeah, that was that was a fun one to watch. We'll see if we get a verdict here between Beecham and Osbo. And uh, we are hearing that we are going back to some sight laps here between field. It kind of comes off and on. The wind is definitely whipping up, just coming off the waterfront here in Long Beach, so a little brisk, hoods are on, ponchos are on, so a little brisk here, but it definitely clears out the smoke when it is dry. Waiting, waiting for the verdict here, and slide him left for Osbo, right for Trent Beecham. Looks like Frederick Osbo, one and a two, and three. Frederick Osbo gets the win. Beecham knocked out, but a very valiant effort by Trenton Beecham. Look for him to step up, definitely in Atlanta. And that was that was a, you yeah. know, again that was that was an uphill battle. Just knowing, like you said, the the robot Frederick Osbo. But uh, I, I liked how aggressive he was. He needed to do that. But great lead run there by Beecham. Yeah, I mean against, I mean against somebody who isn't a multiple time champion, that definitely could have gone a little bit better for Beecham. But I mean that's that's the hard part when you're going against somebody. Like a Frederick Osbo, you you have to be perfect. Yep. The only way you're gonna you're gonna be able to keep up and compete at that level is to be perfect. But Beecham's close. He's showing a lot of signs of being you know one of the next. Uh, quite a beating here today. Here we go, Chris the Force Forsberg, all new Z on GT Radial tires out front initiates in that first outside zone. He's looking real smooth earlier. 
Doesn't get all the way out there. Rome sharpens here. He dives in on the inside. He's taking a shallower line. Chris Forsberg trying to work into that third outside zone. Again, just coming up a little bit short on those outside zones, but now really good angle from him. And you saw that going from outside zone one into outside zone two. Looked like Rome had to maybe check up a little bit there. That's why he's taking a shallow line going from two to three. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, it was interesting. Just the sound from Chris's car almost seemed a little bit off. So to get through there, you can see Chris hesitant through one, has to push out late, but kind of slow in transition. Misses most of two, so Rome's got to take an inside line. Chris really having to force the car to even get out to three having to, to wheel it around and then, I mean, it was tough. It was definitely tough for Rome. I, I don't know Chris's engine well enough to say that's exactly how it should be driving, but it did sound off to me. There was something that didn't seem quite right. I, maybe I'm looking too much into it, but I've seen Chris all this week and this is not his driving. He was, he was touching the walls all through a practice. Something seems up. All right, well, you know, obviously one of the best of the best, three-time champion. Definitely, uh, you know, he's had he's had success here in Long Beach. And here's the competition timeout for, I believe, Matt Field. There it is, one minute, one minute left for the Beast from the Bay and the Drift Cave camp. Oh, they are absolutely under this thing. Look at Matt's under there. Holy cow, make some noise for him. Hardworking team, cheer him on. They can hear you over in the hot pits. Cheer him on. There's Mr. Field, his dad there. Looks like sus suspension? Yeah, they've got the whole knuckle off. It, I, I'm wondering if it's an axle swap. Um, they've got the whole knuckle. Oh, no. This yeah, is not good. Seconds. This is not good for Matt Field. Winner last year here in Long Beach. They don't have a wheel on, and they got 30 seconds. Matt Field could have to retire as he was going to go against Ken Gushi. Let's see what happens here. The second half of this battle, we got RCP and Chris Forsberg. What a wacky event here, but it is Formula Drift. You never know what you're going to get. RCP, Garageistic, BMW, Chris Forsberg, tip to tail on initiation. Coming that first outside zone, there goes Rome. Chris Forsberg trying to apply that pressure. And look at how close in proximity. Rome using all of that outside zone three. Now in that final outside zone, Chris always does this really, really well. And that looked precision. He kept it off the car. And, and that's, you know, both him and Odie on that transition from one to two under the bridge, they just do such a good job of predicting where that car is going to be. Oh, no. And this is absolutely gutting. Timed out. Matt Field unable to fix his car and get it to the line. Make some noise for Matt Field and his team. That is an absolute blow to the system. Lorette, I'm sure, will get some words from him. And uh, Matt just has, has had such a great attitude of progressing on and on. So uh, here we go. What's a... Yeah. What do we got here? Rome looking, I mean, Rome's lead run, I will say, was better than Chris's. He fills all the zones. Now, Chris, able to get in there. I mean, his ability to, to ride in the pocket, be able to transition through the smoke is phenomenal. And the way he gets the nose end of the car in to dive into Rome, but then able to hold it and swing the back end around so it doesn't look out of place is, is great. It's such an expert move that we saw to Chris Forsberg there in the chase. But Rome in the lead, I mean, he filled all the zones. He was quick, he was smooth. This, this is, I mean, this is the same Rome, but this seems like the edge has been honed. You know, we saw how great Rome's been over the years, but we're, we're seeing him grow up. We're seeing yep. him not take unnecessary risks, and that's what that was. Refine it. Yeah, he's getting very more refined. refined. He's, yeah. he's, you know, it's like not just this, you know, kind of, look at this, and Rome Sharpentier gets the win. Rome Sharpentier gets the win over Christopher Forsberg, and there you go. That's what we're talking about, that refinement for RCP. Also, Jacob, you know, we, we talk about our new battle seating brackets. There we are seeing Matt Field. But if you're in the top 24, you're locked in. Yeah. Right? So, uh, again, theoretically, just things can happen if somebody falls out or something like that. But if you're in the 24, you're in. So somebody like Beecham or, or even Forsberg, they won't have to be in the seating brackets going into Atlanta because they're in that top 24. Right. And that is based on the round, not based on season points. Based on so, here. Yeah, yeah. Based on right now. So. There's an upside and a downside to that, but uh, wow, wow. All right, so uh, as uh, you can see, Lorette there. Lorette, down to you real quick, Matt Field. Matt, you always put your best forward. What happened there? Uh, broken axle in the burnout box. And uh, an axle on Corvette suspension is pretty brutal, no matter what. 
I think we were super, super close to actually getting it done. But um, yeah, it's got to be. Everything's got to be perfect. One, one nut holds you up for one second, and that's it. So, congrats to Ken. I was feeling finally starting to feel good for the weekend, and uh, that's it. But that's racing, I guess. We'll try our best to come back for the next round. Matt, thank you very much. Always putting his best foot forward, unfortunately. Thank you so much. Here we go. James Dean backs it in. This is the one more time battle. And look at Jonathan Hurst. James Dean, massive angle there in the outside zone three transition. They are absolutely shredding now, expediting this course, writing their name on the streets of Long Beach. James Dean and Jonathan Hurst in that Mr. Cool Cadillac. That AutoZone Mustang RTR Spec 5FD. That's what we want to see. That was some solid runs. Yeah, James Dean out front was great. I mean, Hurst gets caught up a little bit on that launch, but then makes up for it through the rest of this run. But James Dean, wall to wall, big swing, no corrections. Front wheels going exactly where they need to be. Jonathan Hurst able to chase in behind him. And then James Dean here, maybe a little bit off that inside clip, nothing too crazy. And then as we get into the basically into these replays to see what Jonathan Hurst was doing in the chase. You can see him surging in and out just a little bit, but he's able to basically reel in James Dean throughout the most of this run. He could have been in a little bit deeper, but we're gonna swap this around. Jonathan Hurst is gonna take the lead. You know he's gonna basically run this as hard as he possibly can, and, and James Dean's gonna have to try and keep up. Well, and, and you know what's, this is exactly what he manifested. He says, take a couple breaths at the line, I trust James, boom, trust fall. He says, catch me. And he says, catch me on your door. Catch me, catch me outside is what he said. And he was, he was right there. So really, really good, uh, really good run there by both the drivers. And uh, watch this, the Mr. Cool Cadillac. I, I, what, do you know why he chose this car? Uh, I just wanted to be different. That's it. I mean, right. he's a guy who likes to stand out, and what's more, what's more stand out than an XLR? I mean, the thing looks like half the height of that, of that Ford Mustang here. But the, all right, here we go. Jonathan Hurst up front, initiating. Look at that tit for tat by James Dean. That XLR Cadillac, one and two. Phil ticking the boxes here. Is Jonathan Hurst now into that last inside clip? And James oh, Dean. Man. Oh my gosh. Wow, what an effort by both the drivers. What a solid run. Make some noise for James Dean and Jonathan Hurst. Again, the one more time battle between them. Let's take a look at it again here, Jacob. All right, Jonathan Hurst, e-brake. And you see almost a bit of contact there from James Dean, who's getting real aggressive. Jonathan in through the first outside zone, doing a phenomenal job and keeping the rotation going through the second, getting real deep in three, but a little bit late. Shoots off to our touch and go. James Dean almost gets gapped there for a second. And then Jonathan Hurst back on the power. So there's a couple of spots here going back and forth where they, they, they made some mistakes, not many, but you did see that James Dean did touch Jonathan Hurst. Maybe Jonathan could have gotten a little bit deeper there through outside zone one, but he is not the kind of guy to let up when there's contact. He's the kind of guy to put his foot down, drive even harder, and that's what we saw. So James could have done a little bit better through that touch and go section. It just shows how fast of a driver Jonathan Hurst is when when James when you can start pulling a bit of a gap right. on James Dean. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's really amazing what the cash racing team is doing. You know, Mr. Cool picked him up last year, and it, it's been great to see just him, just just like you mentioned, Rome, earlier, that refinement, that, that yeah. uniqueness, that personality shine through, not only just the person itself, but in the car, in the aesthetics, in the driving prowess. Yeah, so looking at our uh, airforce.com replay side by side here, you can see the difference in their lines. Jonathan was a little bit closer than James Dean was uh, when we talk about the follow runs. And then through this section here, James did go a little bit wide, kind of missed some of that inside clip. So both of them had very small mistakes in the lead and both of them had very small mistakes in the chase. Um, like I said, a little bit of contact from James, but yeah, it's, it's really gonna come down to these very small points to make the call. Yeah, just splitting hairs, as I always say, and that's what's going down. These guys are looking at those side-by-side -side runs. It gets tough. Vernon, Brian Eggert, Chris Marin. Again, Vernon and Mr. Marin there. Just uh, It's tough. Welcome. You can see them. They're, yeah. they're, they're stressing out over these. This is not easy. Yep. Again, uh, Pat Gentile, P2, being replaced by Chris Ewell. Here we go. Slide him left for James Dean, right for Jonathan Hurst. One more time. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy about this. Is those 85s? Are those 85s? 
So one more time. We those, can call those, that. I, I think those are indicative of 85. Those are definitely close. over 85. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's, it, it, that is just the finest of tolerances of, of driving and proximity and filling those zones. So there it is. Uh, OMT X2. Yeah. So. Got to love a, a double one more time in top 16. That's where we're at now. This yeah. Is, you know, 2024 and, and again, drifting. We're, we're, we're not forcing the hand of saying we don't want to see one more times anymore. We just think about, you know, not seeing something. We don't want to see bad runs again, you know. And, and I will, you know, defend the judges here, James Dean and John Kirsten. That first one, they both spun. They both, oh, here we go. So real quick, this is Ken Gushi. This is a bye run here for Ken Gushi, the Gretti, Mati's Kenda tire, Toyota GR86. Just get through the course real quick. He's running a 2J setup. So with Ken Gushi and that by run, sounds like he's fighting the car. I don't Something know. sounds off. I think they're yeah. going to pull that in the pits real quick. Okay, yeah, you just quickly get over there. So Gushi and RCP in the great eight. Talking about the Torque Motorsport. Look at that smile. You can just see it just shining through that helmet. So RCP and Ken Gushi in the great eight, but right now still in that Royal Purple Top 16. One more time, it was the Dean Hurst, but again, you know, two one more times. The first one, they both had that mistake on the first run, right? right. Both in lead and chase. Then defaulting to the second run, they both had a good lead and a good chase. So it, it, it's not, not both were 85. It's just like they were both 85s on their lead and their chase. And then it just, right. it, 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 that was just such a unique situation. That's why I always say, you know, in, in the vicinity of, right? Or the, the, the verbiage and the language, you know, it, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's not tough. It's just we need to clarify more. Yeah. That's what we're doing. So moving on to our next battle here. Looks like we got Simon Olsen pulling up, and he's going against Robert Thorne. Got some young guns in the house. Yeah. I mean, they're all young to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. How old are you, Jacob? 33. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to celebrate your uh, 31st or 35th birthday in yeah. Irwindale for the Mine? next yeah, amount of years. Yeah. yeah. Add, add 10 on that. <laughs> <laughs> and plus one. We Here go. we go. Simon Olsen is going to lead Robert Thorne giving chase. Simon Olsen, watch out, and Robert Thorne, this newly developed vehicle, you were giving it definitely some accolades here, and look at that, Robert Thorne comes up a bit short on that first outside zone, big angle there for Olsen, Whoa. you see Robert Thorne, good proximity, but look how locked and loaded Thorne is, looks like he maybe got off a line there, and Olsen dialed. What, what, you, you look a little baffled here. Are you stoked on Olsen's angle, or are you, Dude, what are you startled by? I don't know if I've ever seen somebody hold that much angle for that long on this track. That was insane. So take a look at Olsen's lead here. He does have to throw the back end out. Now watch the car snap. Outside zone two, he's holding full lock, and then keeps just keeps it going. I mean, a lot of guys would spin out at that point or try and shore the car up. Olsen's like, nah, I got this. We'll just keep going. But Robert Thorne in the chase does a good job. That move from Olsen would trip up a lot of people. And I mean, Robert Thorne's probably got as much seat time as anybody here, maybe not in a drift car, but you do see him drop some angle there as Olsen just holding that kit full lock. I mean, he's using every bit of that wise fab at this point. Yeah. yeah. No, that was, they got their money's worth on that kit. Yeah, they, I mean, that was set it and forget it. From outside zone two all the way to that touch and go transition. Really good, really good line there by Simon Olsen. Now, Thorne will be out front. See if he can see if he can better that. It's gonna be a hard act to lead as opposed to follow. So Thorne. Looks like getting some communication going on here. Yep. And that is Simon Olsen. Looks like he's talking to the starter. Could be Sopa. All right. And seeing what is cooking, moving through our Royal Purple Top 16. And here are the matchups. As a, let's throw it down to Lorette, who's with RCP. Well, I wanted to catch up with Rome, and my goodness, it has been an eventful uh, event, and the car is good now. Um, as a little reminder, the car was hit three times, and there was some damage sustained, but everything is good now. Yeah, it seemed, the guys seem to straighten it out the best we can. I mean, visually, there's some stuff bent, but uh, they aligned it, and it seems to drive pretty straight, so we're just going to push it. I love that you said it seems to drive pretty straight. What does that actually mean? Uh, I mean, it means that you... Of this going against either 
Simon Olsen or Robert Thorne. And the sight lap again being utilized. Ideally, we see uh, dry conditions for the uh, remainder of the event. Remember, just uh, less than a month, round two, Atlanta. Be sure to tune in. Here we go. Ryan Turk, Rainex, Toyota, GR Corolla, Rockstar Energy Pilot, Nick Novak. Approaches and has to back off. Ryan Turk not exactly the deepest on the first outside zone. Now in the second outside zone. Here goes Ryan Turk in the outside zone three. The race service boys cheering him on. James Kirkham, Andy Lapuka, Jacob Agajani, and I know you're cheering him on. And Nick Novak, he's got his family in the building cheering him on. So it's all family affair across the board. Shandy Pants cheering on Ryan Turk and Roman saying, Go, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, Rick Turk looked a little bit more hesitant on this one. I mean, you have a couple of hits, you start to rethink a few things. Now, Nick Novak does have a big error there in the chase, but Turk, not all the way out to outside zone one. Could have been a little bit deeper on outside zone two. Hey, if the car was a little bit longer, he would have been perfect, but you got the Corolla, so this is what you got. And then you can see a bit of a desperation move there from Nick Novak, realizing that he's behind. Could have been dealt with maybe a little bit smoother, but you see there that big That's correction. Smart. Yeah, and look at Ryan Turk, Definitely could have been deeper in both those zones. I think there's some hesitation. I do think there's, you know. Rightfully so. Yeah, I mean, he's had a big hit here before. Yep. He's had a couple big hits here already this weekend. Maybe they're running low on parts, and it's like, okay, listen, man, right. can't stuff it in the wall. We're, we're, we're running, running real low on uh, yeah. control arms. Yeah, absolutely. I saw, dude, I saw his, there's a Hot Wheels of this car. No way. Yeah, it's sick. Uh. My, my boy Lamley, Rod Chong, showed it to me. Damn. This thing, this, it's pretty, pretty cool. So. I'm um, psyched on that. All right, so here we go. Let's alternate the order here. Nick Novak will lead. Ryan Turk give it chase. Don't leave in the judges' hands. Own it. Take what's yours. Either Nick Novak or Ryan Turk. Nick Novak, big angle, goes all the way out there. Ryan Turk tucks in into the pocket with that little hot hatchback. Oh, oh, Nick Novak goes deep. Ryan Turk spins out. Ryan Turk spins out as Nick Novak went really deep. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of smoke there and just, if we had tunnel vision here, I could just see through that smoke. Man, that car has been bang, I mean. Yeah. Wow. All right, let's, let's run that back. You know, with Nick going in hard, did Ryan follow him in there? Because you gotta think he's, he's in there and the BMW has, a bigger back bumper, the, yeah. the Corolla has Almost I mean, hardly anything. Yeah, hardly so anything. If he's following, you know, the exact same way, there's going to be less room for error, right? There's, there's only maybe 10 inches behind that rear wheel that you can collapse in, whereas on the BMW, you got a solid foot. So go. let's take a look here. Nick Novak, great job through outside zone one to transition into two. Turk starting to dive in. Look at the angle he's pulling out, picking up a lot of speed. And then right here, Ah, that looks like Turk hit the, the side of Novak and then caught the back and then spun around. Does this look like what uh, Turk and Shanahan happened earlier? Um, man. You know, I know, I'm saying, remember what Turk hit? Yeah. And Shanahan there? So this, I, I, I just, mean, this I didn't for, see. Not exactly, but no. a fairly comparable scenario or situation. Yeah, I don't know if Novak really got into the wall as heavy. Oh, man, it did stall him up a little bit, though, because it, it looked like basically the rear end of that car collapsed in and then potentially the wheel touched. Now, Novak went in very perpendicular to the wall. So right here is where we're looking for it. Turk diving in, Novak touches, bounces off. Turk hits the front. He, Turk does get hit by Novak's car bouncing off the wall. This is very close to what happened with Shanahan. Yep, so again, oh, a bit of a roll reversal of what we saw earlier with Turk and Shanahan in the 32, and then eventually went the other way due to the tire, de-beating, and this and that and the other thing, and I'm seeing hoods, and ponchos coming out. Looks like my scene, uh, again, you know, we're under a tent, we have our fans here, our hardcore fans, enduring a, just a little bit of spitting, but it's just off and on throughout the day, which literally rains on our parade. So unfortunate. And, you know, I, I think we're going to see side laps once again here in just a little bit. But taking a look at our United States Air Force instant replay once again, our Royal Purple Top 16, Royal Purple the Synthetic Experts, the official engine oil of Formula Drift. So here we go. No back. Hits. Now, Turk does hit the back end almost at the exact same time as Novak's 
kind of back end flicks out to catch the front end of Turk. It's hard to say what could have happened, but it almost seems like if Novak didn't do that, Turk would have gone into the wall regardless. It's really, really hard to say though. There's a lot of what ifs here. Oh, we're, I mean, we're, getting, we're getting a significant amount of rain now. Yeah. So just to add to the plot a little bit more, we're definitely getting sight laps at this point. Oh, for sure. Yeah, umbrellas coming out. And again, if you're here in the building, be respectful. Obviously, you know, want you to stay dry, but those umbrellas, just just be mindful of, uh, of your neighbors here. Slide him left for Turk or right for Nick Novak. Nick Novak gets one and two votes. So Nick Novak advances on, as we said, you know, was, was lottery there. But right now, here's the second half of it. That ASM, BMW, Robert Thorne, Simon Olsen gonna chase him down. We saw a phenomenal lead run by Olsen on that first battle. Now it's gonna be a slow trickle here, similar to the rain. It's gonna be a little wet, a little slick, and Thorne slowly navigates into that first outside zone, almost like snowball. As Robert Thorne crawls his way in, just walk it like a talk it into that outside zone three, and it is just so slow for that last out and say inside clip. Oh boy. The hard part too is, you know, you got, they you got a dry run, you got a wet run. I know, I know. And they got out there when they when they would have gridded up, it would have been still dry. So they're running dry setups, the suspension, yep. the sway bars, everything is set up for the dry. The upside is battles coming after this, they're gonna they're gonna change some things, they're gonna disconnect sway bars, they're gonna change the suspension drop some tire pressure and, and hopefully be able to navigate this a little bit quicker. But let's take a look here. Definitely, a, we don't need slow-mo for this one. You can see every input that's going on, but Robert Thorne does get all the way out to outside zone one, and we can hang tight here and wait for outside zone two. Not too bad, could have been a little bit deeper there. And as they crawl their way out to outside zone three, you can see just how difficult it is to wrangle over a thousand horsepower in these cars on these tires. These are not rain tires. They run the same sets of tires all the way through. There's no grooving, there's no cutting. What they got is what they got, and right now, they're, they've got rain. So, it'll be interesting. I, I'm curious how the judges are gonna lay this out and, and understand who did better, but. Yeah, this is, this is apples and oranges. That, yeah. that, that first dry battle, really aggressive by Simon Olsen out front. Robert Thorne, you know, had some mistakes chasing him down. Didn't get, didn't get exactly in that pocket. And, and I like what you're saying there, elaborating on setup and, and what we're going to see. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can set these cars up to be still pretty quick in the rain, but these were not set up that way before they came out on track. All right, so Vernon, Brian Egger, Mr. Marin. When was the last time we had rain at Long Beach? It, it, it feels like almost like every other year, three years. I, I can't recall. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's been windy. It's been cold. It's been hot. Yeah. Um, it's it's been just kind of all over the place. And now here are these guys, you know, out working in the rain. All right, slide him left for Olsen, right for Thorne, and it looks like Simon Olsen will get the victory. The official engine oil of Formula Drift. Like I said, this this could really favor James Dean. Just you know, he's very obviously a lot of driving, arguably one of the best drifters in the world. And here we go, sliding into that first outside zone. You saw an early initiation there from Jonathan Hurst. James Dean crawls into that first outside zone. I mean, listen to this thing. Wound up in an outside zone two. Massaging it in. Look at that. Just standing on the throttle, Jonathan Hurst. And this is where it gets hairy. You can see just that long, oh, slick run there. In his final, <laughs> Jonathan Hurst adding some flair around that final inside clip. And they bring it around. So just crawling their way through it. If everybody could blow really hard, and maybe we could dry the track. Okay, just, there we go. All right, same time, let's get that, let's get that jet dryer out there. Could work. So James Dean, I mean, he's basically driven in the rain most of his life. Jonathan Hurst doing everything he can here. now. I will say the Nittos do generally struggle a little bit more in the rain, and we don't really know how the Kendos do with the new compound, but we do see that James is able to get out quite a bit of a lead on Jonathan Hurst here, who's breaking the sound ordinance every time he touches the gas pedal. 
But James Dean able to keep the car very much under control. It's a slow go, but it is very, very controlled, whereas Jonathan's is a little bit more herky-jerky. You can see him basically taking that inside clip for a ride. So James might have been, you know, the whole thing's slow, but it was very controlled. Yeah, we've... Uh... And this is what the battle could have looked like. But uh, this was uh, James Dean with the... Uh, Oh, the, the, the incident earlier. So yeah. we've seen rain, we've seen fire. I don't know. We fire, get some wind, some rain. earth. We got uh, all the airbenders. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I was thinking more. Uh, what's, what's James? Uh, yeah. Talking about musician. Uh, ah, fire, gotcha. and rain. Yep. See sunny days. I thought it would never end. I, I mean, I'm, I was hoping the sunny day would never end, but here right. we are. Yep, James Taylor. Thank you. Ah. James Taylor. I've seen fire and rain. 21, Jack Johnson, Tom O'Leary. All right, here we go. So the second half of this battle, Jonathan Hurst and James Dean. Yeah, James, the windshield wiper's working extra hard, man. That, 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 that car has seen it all. Here we go. Hurst and Mr. Cool Caddy will be leading. Here we go. Now into this first outside zone. The Cadillac just Missing outside, he drops that back left into the wall. Oh, buddy. Little correction there. Looks like he's almost going to move it. Wow. This thing is just, wow. Wow, it sounds like uh, Apocalypse Now going down. This sounds insane. I think he's auditioning. Sounds like, sounds like, sounds like a firing range. Make some noise. It's like he's auditioning for the movie Drumline. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Love that car, though. Yeah. rat a tat tat All right. Let's see here. So, Jonathan Hurst, obviously, up front in that XLR. A little bit of a boop there. James Dean, OK. That's how you need to drive in the rain. Jonathan getting on the throttle nice and early as they start to push out. Now, obviously, James Dean able to keep everything under composure. We did see a bit of a gap here previously, but James able to close that in. Jonathan throwing a ton of angle. Big correction there with the e-brake. So they go around, and this is where we, we get all the limiter at this point. So James, a little bit further back than maybe where he could have been. Jonathan able to stretch out a bit of a lead there. But the judges are going to take a look at both runs, understand who did better in the lead, who did better in the chase, and see what the overall driving ability was of, of both the drivers. I mean, this is not easy. When you're doing this out in the rain, this is incredibly difficult. These yeah. cars are meant to go at a full clip. So when you, you start to add in a little bit of, little bit of these tiers, yeah. It's not any easier. Absolutely. Yeah, it gets, it gets tough for them. And, you know, the fans are, are still sticking around. Thank you, guys and gals. Children of all ages. So who's moving on to go against Frederick Osbo? Left for Dean or right for Hurst. And it looks like James Dean gets the victory. A great hard-fought effort after not one, but two one more time. The third battle, he finally got a victor. Noah. See how he handles it. You see, smell the rain. Wind, a little cold. Here we go. About to heat things up. Let's see if we get some steam here. Manoa shimming his way into that first outside zone. Looks like Odie, like you said, that set of thing. He does tap the wall. You know, this, this is pretty interesting here as Odie now comes into that third outside zone. Manoa, look at that, he drops in. Manoa crawls into that third outside zone and approaching that final inside clip. Some separation into the inside clip. Odie takes it out. Manoa wraps it around just barely. Nice job there by both the drivers. What do you think, Jacob? Got a, got a Japanese flag out yeah, there. Yeah, the support is incredible yeah. um, for somebody. I mean, it's, it's really cool to see the fan base really understand the importance of what we're seeing here. So Odie, a bit of a, an interesting situation there with this initiation. Looked like he wanted to swing it out, but wasn't able to. You can see he's he's got this car dialed in on that straight line. Very quick there. Probably dialing back a lot of power just to make sure that he's not absolutely blasting through this, but already holding a lot of angle, pulling out some wheel speed, grabbing a bit of e-brake, getting through that zone. Manoa able to keep up there. I mean, nothing too crazy. He's not on the door, but he's not getting completely outdriven. And then Odie here taking out our inside clip pretty heavily, punching, basically center punching. So a little bit of a room for improvement there in the lead. Definitely some room for improvement in the chase. 
So yeah, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm very curious to see what Manoa does out in the lead in the rain. It's not something I have a lot of data on. No, <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, just all the simulator practice back home in Japan, this, this could come, this could play a major role here, just getting that position, settling it in, and, and, fill, and filling those zones. All right, Sandy Carr, here we go. Manoa now leading Odie Bakshi's giving chase. Let's see what we got. Like I said, Manoa not. No data as far as what we've seen from him in the rain. He comes out spicy. Yeah. He's getting froggy here. Let's see what Manoa's got. Just are exciting. He's excited after that interview with Lorette Nickel. I mean, he's got he's got some pace. He's got some pace. Cody Bosky looks like he gets thrown off a little bit, but look at he, that's what I'm talking about. He he could even predict there on that transition. Manoa goes in that last outside zone. 14 years old. Into that last inside clip, Manoa. He takes it out. So seems to be a trend right there. Center punching that last inside clip, taking it home as a souvenir back to Japan. Gonna have to check an extra bag to bring that comeback. Yeah. All right, so Manoa navigates the course. The rain continuing, continuing to come down. What do you think, Jacob? Well, Odie did have to get out of the way. I mean, the, the chase driver does have to kind of concede that to the lead driver. Manoa really getting the car out there. Doesn't really benefit him too, too much, but we do see a lot of angle coming out of that car. Nice wall tap there. Odie doing everything he can to hold that car back, and then we see how those S chassis move in transition as we start to push out towards outside zone three, and you can see Manoa taps, Odie taps. Just playing, playing shadow games at this point in time. As they transition through our touch and go, Manoa does get the car gripped up and is able to kind of push through a little bit quicker than Odie does. Now, it, what's interesting here is when you're driving in the rain, it's, it's, not, it's not like just adding more wheel speed is gonna get you to go faster. You have to very much play with the grip levels. You, you actually kind of want a bit of a lower speed. So a lot of guys are gonna dial back horsepower. Some guys may even change gearing if they have time to make sure that they have just enough wheel speed to have that car moving. Yep, all right, well, look at that. Our girl uh, getting the heat on the on the street, but unfortunately it's a little a little wet on the feet, if you know what I mean. So Lorette Nickel down there, getting some inside. She's sitting next to uh, Simon Olson, who we'll see. I mean, look at that. The fuel suspension still in it to win it in our Toke Motorsports Great Eight. Here is our side by side, courtesy of the United States Air Force. So speed does play somewhat of a factor here. It, it more just, you know, is, is how far of a gap you can pull and how much grip you can dial in. So when we talk about like wall to wall action, it does look like Manoa does a bit better of a job getting out to all the zones. Uh, but when we get into the chase, Odie was able to mirror him quite well. There is a couple of spots where one starts to pull away from the other, as we can see here in that side by side. But realistically, I do think this is going to come down to who put down the better lead run because both chases did have some, some issues. Both leads did center punch that, that final inside clip. So I do think it's going to be who filled probably one and two a little bit better. Uh, three, you know, seemed fairly parallel. So in my, in my, you know, if I was a judge, um, that's what I'd be looking at is, is who filled one and two better. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, three is a wash touch and go, inner clip's kind of old. Yeah, in, yeah, inside clip is tough, but I mean, you know, and it is like that scale, yeah. right? You know, you're kind of judging on it. I don't want to say scale, but you're same, same conditions, which yeah. are less than ideal. Um, navigating this, this is, you got to bring it, man. It's, it's tough. It is very tough. So waiting for the outcome here, our judges. Cooling things down a little bit, taking a look. Again, Vernon, Marin, and Mr. Ryan Egger. You have to photocopy all of Vernon's notes when he's done. He's got a full clipboard. He's got multiple pages. He's got this all graphed out. I think he's just drawing a picture of you. I think so, too. Here we go. Odie Bakshis and Manoa. Got it one more time. We got Odie Bakshis and Odie Bakshis. So Manoa. The side. So the tires that have that are going to do traditionally better in the wet. Um, we've, right now, we've got the Kendas and the Vitors. Both of them have a very, I wouldn't say similar, but a, a general approach to evacuating that water. So both these cars should be able to handle the rain all right. The channeling, the grooving, as Rome Charpentier, you see him correct, Ken Yushi. Out of the gate, here we go, Rome Charpentier. Oh, gets into the wall. And Ken Yushi in the chase position here. 
And Rome now coming to that third outside zone. Brawling his way in. Oh, oh, that's a big hit. Pushes that trunk out of the way. And Rome was talking about it. He says, everything's crooked, but it seems to be straight. Like, that was that was the line he told Lorette Nickel. Yeah. That's, that was tough. I mean, he definitely got aggressive. And, I mean, the, the judges do kind of look at this a little bit differently when we're in the rain. They're obviously acknowledging the fact that this is significantly more difficult. Um, so some of the errors are a little bit more acceptable uh, just, just because of the rain. I mean, there's going to be corrections that you're going to see in real time a lot easier. So let's take a look here. Rome using as much of the course as he possibly can. And we can see there that trunk flapping a little bit, and he drives a little bit straight through that initiation. Ken doing a good job of mirroring it. And then Rome really uses as much of the bumper there to get that car back into the second outside zone. A little bit more of a bobble there. Ken doing a good job, keeping back by a few feet. And then Rome, once again, pushing real wide, almost drives the car straight, does have some angle in the wheels, has to reinitiate a little bit more, has to reinitiate a little bit more again. So I think Ken did the, exactly what he should have done. Rome was struggling out front, lay back a little bit, fill the zones in the chase, kind of let Rome do his own thing out front and just show that you're able to keep the car under control. Right. Behind him. You know, we do want them to be parallel, we want them to tandem, but when the guy out front is banging off walls and straightening and reinitiating, you, you gotta play it safe. You can't follow that. No, it's, no, it's, it's, it's not chaseable. It's nearly impossible, like, okay, I'm gonna bank, no, I'm not gonna compromise my vehicle for that. So yeah, it, it gets very difficult. So, you know, as, as banged up as, you know, Rome is, Gucci seems to be keeping it clean so far and knock on wood, the announcer's curse doesn't come, come to life here with his Gretti Mati's 86. The windshield wipers are absolutely ripping right now. You can see <laughs> the trees there, the breeze. So that just, that adds all the elements. Yeah, I think I saw Ken wiping the inside of the windshield too. Right. I mean, fog is another part of this that you have to think about. You're gonna get hot engine, you know, air coming out oh. from underneath the hood onto the windshield and then cold, damp air inside. So that's a, a, just another thing to make this more difficult. Just fog it up. Here we go. Yeah, there's Rome. So, yeah, it comes up. It's, it's, it's coming down pretty good now. It's not thick rain, but just consistent. It's absolutely consistent. Here we go. Lights extinguish. Type best, the official lighting of Formula Drift. They go off, and Ken Gushi will lead here in a very wet, less than ideal condition. So just sliding it on in. Not exactly at the pace we've seen previously. And I mean, you can just see the puddles and how, how they're going to accumulate and how that's going to make the car react in a second outside zone. Oh, look at Rome diving in on the inside. Rome getting aggressive. It's like Ken Gushi looking more dialed in. If you can recall, Gushi didn't sound 100% on that by run, remember? Because yeah. he, got, he got that that fast pass because the field was out. So this might favor him because it is wet. So yeah. if he's not, and again, we don't know. We were absolutely speculating. But on that by run, we're like, oh, it doesn't sound 100%. So this might might absolutely favor Ken Gushi. A lot of a lot of drivers are gonna are, are gonna take power out of the car if they can. I mean, it, it becomes a little bit more difficult with things like superchargers, but running on a turbo, you can just dial back the boost and and really make the car easier to drive. So if Ken is down on power, it's actually a pretty big advantage right now. You can see Ken pulling out a bit of a gap there on Rome, who seems to be struggling a bit more. Now Ken doesn't get all the way out to outside zone one. Rome got more than enough through outside zone one and actually caused a bit of an issue. Ken, you can see the e-brake when the, that wheel locks up there in the rear. That's usually them grabbing the e-brake. Does a good job through there. Rome not doing too, too bad. We do see a little bit more of a straighten there from Rome, but Ken was fluid. I mean, he, he got all the zones. He didn't quite, you know, fill them completely, but there was no major mistakes in the lead there. So I do think there's a, a bit of an advantage uh, for Gucci on this one if, uh, if I was a betting man. All right, well, there you can see the field guys watching on. Odie is already in the final four, the Type S final four. And he's gonna be watching on his his teammate. RCP, Kenshiro Gushi, slide him left for RCP, or right for Kenshiro Gushi. Gushi gets the win and will go against Simon Olsen or Nick Novak. So making me hungry thinking of championships. <laughs> <laughs> I go for a nice bag of championships. <laughs> All right, here we go. And we are seeing James Dean come on out swinging. Let's see what Frederick Osbo does. This should be a fun one to watch. We already saw James Dean in the all-wet conditions. Freddie now joining the party into that 
first outside zone, getting into the wall. Look at James hanging out there. Freddie throwing under the bridge. Look at that, look at that, just an absolute roost coming off James Dean's car. Oh, we got a wall tap. We got a wall tap from James Dean. Frederick Osley, look at that left foot break. You can see him trying to massage that thing to the side of the Mustang. And there we go. A little bit of, a little bit of ice, a little bit of rain, a little bit of everything. All right. It was kind of think? fun to see uh, Frederick Osbo essentially chasing the way James Dean was chasing when he first came into the series. James set a precedent of basically nosing the front of the car next to the other one with a little bit less angle, and we start to see a little bit of that coming out of Osbo. So a bit of a throwback, a little reversal, but James Dean really getting the, the wet weather setup dialed in. Look at that. We got both drivers getting as far out to outside zone one as he can without touching the wall, and then now we see Osbo a little bit less angle, but kind of pointing the car at it as Dean goes a little bit wide. You know, with, with a bit more speed, a bit more energy, they probably wouldn't have even noticed that that happened. But because we're at the speeds we're at, you really see when they touch the wall with the actual you know, metal part of the bumper as opposed to more or less the, the fiberglass or carbon fiber facade that goes over top. Shout out to KB forever, Ken Block. Forever in our hearts, KB forever. Love you, buddy. Seeing those jackets there, and now let's alternate the position. We're talking about Frederick Osbo now leading, James Dean hunting him down. The machine, James Dean versus the Norwegian Hammer. So both on equal tires, both on the Nittos. Mm -hmm. I mean, relatively the same horsepower. Big difference here. Um, it's, it's kind of an advantage, actually. Is uh, James Dean? You know that V8. Basically, half its horsepower comes from right. Petrus. Yep. So they can they can very much dial in the amount of horsepower that's there. Now that being said, with with Freddie's inline six, they can dial back a lot of the boost. They can go to basically wastegate, which might be you know eight, ten, twelve pounds, something along those lines. The difference is going to be how that power comes on and off. You can make it a little bit more linear with the nitrous as opposed to when you're running with boost, it can be yeah, a little, you know, jumpier. Yeah. So that being it said, it could spike, especially. Yeah. And and in addition to that. Look, what Odie said is it's loose, it's grippy, it, it, it's kind of all over the place. So here we go. We got Frederick Osbo out front, Rockstar Energy Drink, Toyota, GR Supra, and James Dean are on his way on in. And getting to that first outside zone, you can see Freddie. James taps the ball or barely, just barely kisses it. Ooh, Freddie, that thing grips up and absolutely to your point right there. Here's that Supra. And James Dean <laughs> looked like he had that nice line almost consistent all the way through into this final inside clip. <laughs> oh, James Dean making his presence felt there. That was pretty solid. Yeah, leaving a little signature on the side of right. Osmo's door. Little reminder. You got three, I got three. Let's do this. All right, Liam, fire it up, buddy. All right, <laughs> so let's see. Initiation there, I mean, uh, Sorry, Osbo really holds it for a long time as to throw a little bit more e-brake to push the car out nice and wide to outside zone one. James Dean goes a little bit deeper in outside zone one, but Osbo does grip the car up, goes pretty shallow there through outside zone two, and that might be the difference maker. Now with that, he's able to get ahead a lot, a lot quicker, causing James Dean to have to cut a lot of line in order to make it back into the pocket. And then James Dean right here, quick little boop, as they come through that inside clip, and that, that does come from James cutting line, carrying a bit more speed, just because Osbo wasn't as deep through outside zone two as he should have been. So. Hey, hardcore fans, make some noise. That Those are sticking around here in the rain. Yeah, look at that. Bundled up. Hardcore, thank you guys and gals. Yo, my man, what, what's he doing? Is he dabbing there? I don't even know what he, can you? All right, you're looking good though. Look at that. Blowing umbrellas here, sticking around. Got a cold beer, a little cold weather right now, but looking good here on the waterfront of Long Beach. Thank you, fans, so much. Here we go, slide him left for Dean or right for Frederick Osbo. Wet conditions, favor. Oh! oh! Who's going against Gucci? We're gonna get a victor here. Nick Novak coming out, Kenda Tires. You talk about, again, the variety that everybody's running here. A little faint entry by Nick Novak. He initiates and throws it out, corrects a little bit here. But Novak, boom, Ooh. goes hard into that wall. That can throw him off, but 
Simon Olsen still on pace. Olsen still keeping it go. Oh. oh. You know what? That 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 could have been a lot worse. Yeah. It could have been uh, regardless. Olsen got banged up a little bit, but guess what? I think that's gonna lock it in, seal in the flavor for Simon Olsen. I believe Olsen's gonna win. We'll make it official in just a moment. Yeah, Nick Nick did what he had to do to keep the car from just absolutely burying it yeah. in the wall. And and Simon did everything he could to get out of the way. A little bit of contact there, but I mean, save the cars. The back ends. Yeah. Always 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 go, always go to the back. Yeah. Hit. <laughs> just back back it in there, baby. Yep. All right. Oh, here we go. Let's make it official. Slide him left for Olsen or right for Nick Novak. One more battle to decide who goes into our Type S top four. And Simon Olsen, Nick's championships between the two of them. You got Norway, you got Ireland, and you got two gentlemen that know how to drive in the dry and in the wet. So these guys, uh, you know, seeing Freddie, he had, he had surgery on his thump. Did you know I about saw, that? I, you know, because I saw him down there. I was like, you all getting He's like, oh, yeah. Here we go, James Dean, Frederick Osbo, our final battle of the Royal, or excuse me, the Torque Motorsport Grade 8. Here comes James Dean leading. Now Frederick Osbo in that chase position. James Dean now transitions. It's a one more time battle between them two. Crawling into that third outside zone. <laughs> just sliding it in. Look at this precision, just putting the pin on the map. And our final inside clip wrapped it around. This is like ice skating right now. The ice skating and just the pirouette. Make some noise, fans. You're here. Can't miss that guy. That guy just got cut from a construction site. He's ready to throw down. Your boss is looking for you. Yeah, your boss just calls. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing there? Yeah. Steve, you're supposed to get back to work. Stop sign that's not being flipped right now. All right, so taking a look at James Dean's initiation there. Good job, big e-brake pull. You can see that there is some grip in that run-up. They are getting some speed out of it. And both drivers equal distance to that wall as we come through the first outside zone. Look, at basically parallel. You can see how much longer James holds onto it, whereas Osbo transitions a little bit earlier in, in anticipation. As we start to push out towards outside zone three, you can see Osbo pulling some angle to keep the proximity there. And then and once we get into three, James keeps holding it as we come around that section into our touch and go. And Osbo transitions a bit later. So he actually gets on earlier, starts to transition earlier, but delays it. And then that delay is what pushes him out wider. So as much as being in the rain is definitely slower, the cool thing is you can really start to break down what happens at these small adjustments that you make. Yeah, look at this. We, we're seeing Simon Olsen. He's on jack stance. Yeah, so that must have been the contact that happened with no back. Um, yeah, so it looks like some damage. They've got they've got one of the uh, the rear arms out from the Wisefab kit. We talked about it earlier. These kits are meant to break in very particular spots, so it should be a quick fix, but... Mm, Never know. Yeah, they want this to run as long as possible. All right, here we go. Sending car this side. We got Frederick Osbo. The one more time battle between these two champs. Let's see what Freddie's got. Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota GR Supra. Like I said, he was ice racing in, in his native country of Norway, and he, he tweaked his thumb, so he had, had to have surgery, he was telling me. So pretty great, so he's driving with a, an impaired thumb. Oh, James Dean backs it in, backs it in once again. And it looks like James overcooked it, but Freddie stays in it. Love it. Look at that, Freddie shaken but not stirred into that third outside zone. Look at James now in formation. <laughs> yes, sir, a little slow-mo action. There's your steam cooker, and James looks like he pu almost pushes them around, but what a whip. What a whip by these guys around that final inner clip. What do you say? Make some noise, Long Beach, you hardcore wet fans out there. And here we are taking a look at Simon Olsen. Olsen in the final four. Tools coming out is always a good sign. All right, let's check out this replay. So, bit of a straighter line approach there from Osbo. And you see Dean get on the power. You can see the car bouncing around a little bit. And right here, Dean throws a bit of a hip check that pushes 
Osbo into the wall a little bit more, and then Osbo uses that momentum to start to pull a bit of a gap on James Dean. You can see a little shallower through two, and then James Dean knows that he's behind. He knows that he's made a mistake, and that is when James Dean drives the best. And now he just decides to bury the front end of that RTR into the side of the Supra through the transition, nice and parallel. And right here, we get another hit. So James Dean's like, look, that's almost over. My car's already caught fire. <laughs> let's just let's just have some fun with it. Wheel going on Olsen's car. It's a great sign. Yeah. We'll be checking some alignment here, but uh, yeah, that that. I mean, the field team's able to get that car. I'll tell you uh, what, Odie Boxy's guaranteed a podium. He's wow. our number one qualifier, given that Chelsea, you know, last year, you know, obviously the champion. Right. Uh, he's, he's not here, so Odie slides up to number one. So Odie Box, he's guaranteed at minimum third. Obviously, would like to better that. And on the other side of it, you have uh, qualifying. So, yeah, I think. Yeah. And, and yeah, so you'll see. And uh, Simon also qualified third. Ah. Or, excuse me, not qualified third, but. Third seed, yes, yes, yeah. So judges looking to see the hit again. Where was the issue? Was it from. Was it Freddie that wasn't initiating or pushing out fast enough or, or getting deep enough in that zone? And did that cause James to kind of slide into him? So we'll see it here better with this angle. So look at, uh, Freddie was kind of straight coming into that. I don't know if Freddie would have made it all the way to outside zone one. James kind of pushed him there. But at the same time, just because the driver in the lead is not going potentially where they should have been, doesn't mean that you have the right to hit them. Yeah. So, oh, uh, look at that. All right, he's rolling. Yeah, we'll get the, they'll probably get some toe plates on it. There they go. All right, taking a look here. Again, analyzing those runs, the contact here from James Dean in that chase position. Like you said, it doesn't justify. You can bash into him, but Freddie goes into that first outside zone. This is what we're analyzing here. Watch. Watch Frederick Osbo. Look, yeah, it does look like a little wheel-to-wheel -wheel action now. Ready? Boonk. Yeah, might have might have even forced him into that from James Dean. All right. Old Dirty Panda holding it down. You're getting a text message. That's yeah. what that was. Yeah, that's fine. All right, Judges so again. still looking through replays, it looks like, trying to make that call. Judges analyzing it. This, this is our final final driver for our Type S top four. I wish I could film Brian's hand right now. People are here to party, baby. Yeah, man, you guys still sticking around. How are we doing? Stomp your feet, Long Beach. Stomp your feet. Let me hear you. All right, you know what? It's raining. It's wet. We're in Long Beach. Let's start a wave. Let's start a wave. Uh, where should we start it? Right, uh, what do you got? Oh, here we go. Outcome, James Dean gets the win. All right, James Dean gets the victory. Representing Japan and America. Olsen comes out in that field suspension, S chassis. Looking a little drier. Look at Simon also looking a lot more confident. A little handbrake pull to massage it into that first outside zone. Gets it out there, taps that back left bumper. That bash bar takes it. Oh, Gucci straightens up, but you see him try to gain, regain that position. And Simon also out to the last outside zone. Hits a little late here, so that's gonna definitely throw both of them off. But I think you really do have to modify according to, and, and right there, just going from that black asphalt to that concrete, yeah. it's got to get slick. And that's what Odie was talking about. So you know, what's, what's good right now is, you know, Gucci's independent by himself. Dean's out there by himself. But look at on either side, it could be an Odie Olsen final. Yeah, it's it could be. I mean, there's a lot of variables that still have to go through, but that would be absolutely incredible. So Simon Olsen, once again, doing what he did before and holding a ton of angle in the car, you can see how that line looks really good. Does have a bit too much of a hit there on that first outside zone, but then the second, a very modified line that he's running here. Now the judges will allow you to run something slightly different in the wet. And I think some of this is just Simon finding a spot that the car wants to settle into. When we get into like these grip, non-grip areas, sometimes it's actually easier just to push it further into the wet sections of the track because it's a little bit more predictable than having the patchy sections. Now, Ken Gushi following behind, playing this very smart. You can see him trying to anticipate what's going on. Dives in here with a little bit of a straighten. 
Some backfires coming out of that 2J from Gucci. And then just not keeping a ton of angle, but keeping the pressure on Simon. And then right here, you can see Kent start to dive in. Doesn't quite have the same grip that Simon was able to get. And then shoots it almost a little bit too wide. But Ken's a pro. I mean, he's he's been through this. He's seen worse. Ken knows how to deal with this. Now, we're going to swap him around. Hopefully, Simon can keep that momentum going. I think Ken's got a, got some things in his bag of tricks. Yeah, I think Ken, with the fresh air, he's going to... he's. Like I said, it, hopefully it comes together for him. This Toyota GR86 running the 2J. He's back with Gretti. It, just a lot of things are comfortable with him, but as he said, still needs to really come together like Velcro. We'll see if he can stick it. Here we go. Ken Gushi out front. Can we kick it? Yes, we can. Here we go. Ken Gushi, Simon Olsen. Chase him down. Field suspension GT radial. Now into the outer zone. There goes Goosh. Ooh, he goes in hard. A little bit of correction there. First real damage we've kind of seen to, to Ken Gushi's new ride. Into that last outside zone. Look at Olsen. Just the composure there, just waiting. He's in the waiting room to see if he's going to advance on into the finals. Olsen finishing fourth overall last year. Ooh, not the best line from Simon Olsen. He did have good proximity and did mimic Gushi. Yeah, we can see it already starting to dry up as they leave that section. Now we do have, right. we can see in the puddles there, a bit of raindrop still coming down, but these track conditions are ever changing, ever evolving, and we are seeing a bit more drizzle coming down. So let's see here. So Ken out front, big whip initiation as he dives back in, gets that car into angle real early, holding it as long as he possibly can, comes through that inside section across those rumble strips, and then very similar to Simon, taps that wall, uses that momentum, does go straight for a little bit, but able to get a, a, a good spot coming through the second outside zone. You see Simon here trying to dial things in. And then Ken, as we come through this puddle, starts to pick up grip a little bit earlier than Simon does. Able to play with the grip of the car a little bit better. And that causes Simon to get on the back foot, not able to keep up with Ken as they come through the last part of that zone. So. Still have a little bit of work to do here. As both drivers needed to improve in a couple of sections, but it looks like... Bakshi said Olsen. So check this out. So Simon Olsen gets the victory. So right now, so Olsen in the finals. Ken Gushi, unfortunately, uh, just given his position 16th, he will not podium. But a great effort from his team. He's finishing fourth here at round one. That's a good points hunt for him. He'll be locked and loaded for Atlanta, the Gretty Motti's team on Kenda tires. So, uh, so a great effort there from Threes Racing, Toyota, GR86. And now the other side. So who is Olsen going against? Olsen will find out. Is it going to be James Dean or is it going to be the boss man, Odie Bakshi, says they come out scrubbing. And we got some uh, some funny communique from Lorette Nickel here. And it says that Vaughn's, Vaughn's yelling, he didn't fly here for James to get third. <laughs> we don't need no stinking third. He wants, he wants to get that victory. So this guy's just dancing out here. All right, so, man, look at that. I mean, that that puddle, I mean, yeah, it's a lot. So, yeah, Vaughn, Vaughn's down there in the pits saying, I didn't fly here to get have James get third place. So there it is. Nickel, knuckles, fist bumps, high fives for Gucci, smiling. And uh, I think all things considered, this might this might very well be a dub for him, just given his... Yeah, him, him and his his simpatico with the car. Yeah, new car. Take this as take this as a big win. I mean, to build something new and come out and, and do this well, I think you got to you got to be happy. Yep. Odie Bakshi's James Dean. See the stats. What it comes down to is who's gonna outdrive who in the rain. And Odie Bakshi's will lead on the first portion of this battle. Remember. What's left? Simon Olsen. So will it be an all-field suspension GT Radio S chassis battle? Or is it going to be James Dean versus Simon Olsen? Look at this, just Simon Olsen. Like I said, just never would have thought that 
just, you know, it's not a drastic change. It's just it foreign to him, and it just worked out so well. Yeah, yeah, he, he, took, to, he took to this car like a fish to water. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's like it was meant to be. Even, even last year, seeing him at this very yep. race, first couple of runs in, I, I turned to a spot and I was like, oh, okay, we're here. Dude. Like, that's it. That's, that's all you guys needed. Unreal. Yeah. Here we go. Now we are seeing Odie Bakshi's lead, James the Machine Dean. Odie coming out of that start chicane. Windshield wipers are on. Again, rain intermittent here and there. Now coming into that outside zone. Odie brings it out, taps Whoa. the ball, he bounces off of it. James Dean, you see him pedal back a little bit. That allows Odie to pull away. Some corrections there from Odie Box. He's taking a very shallow line, but you can see him just like crab walking that thing. Just baby steps and James Dean, good proximity. Kind of a straight line approach, but had to do that. Going into that final inside clip. Man, not a lot of notes on this one. I mean, as they're driving in the rain more and more, they're understanding what the car needs to do. I would assume by now both drivers and both teams have their setups completely dialed in. This is the best that they're going to be at this point. So Odie, good initiation there. We're seeing a lot of guys tapping the wall pretty hard in, in that first outside zone. Now Odie uses that to be able to get ahead. We're using the momentum. It's not a bug, it's a feature in this case. Outside zone three, we see Odie doing quite well, filling that zone well, and James, Holding things together, holding on. I mean, this is not easy. This is not a, a situation anybody wants to be in. But both drivers have so much experience driving in the wet. Look at that. You can see James almost hesitant to push the car forward as Odie takes a, a, a pretty decent hit on that wall. Doesn't disrupt his line too much. Uses that transfer momentum to shoot himself down the course. I mean, yeah, we can see how many corrections. You can see the rear wheels locking. You can see the brake lights going on. It is hectic in those cars in this condition. Yeah. You are constantly modifying. It's, it's like a drummer. It's like a drum <laughs> solo in there is, is what it looks like if you see the in-car. The beat laboratory? Yeah. All right, just banging away. There's Milstein looking good. Hey, yeah. hey, it just takes a little bit. It's still there. <laughs> just trying to hear some of, the, <laughs> some of the chatter, some of the banter. And man, it is, uh, it's, getting, it's getting colder, wetter, and it's, uh, is it coming down? It's, yep. All right. I don't know, so here we go. Looks like James Dean out front. Transitioning, who's going against Simon Olsen in the finals? Cody Bakshi's or James Dean? James Dean out front. He knows how to drive in the rain. He kisses that back bumper. Oh, oh and Cody Bakshi's counters. The wind whips up. Talking about the wind or the wind, James Dean into the outer zone. Odie Bakshi's dragon bumper on the ground, not on the wall. Into that touch and go, and then into that final inside clip. And the rain really coming down now. It is really wet here. It is windy and the rain is dumping. Wow, the most rain we've seen all day coming down. Now on to the fans. And taking a look here again, Jacob. It, it just started dumping here, yeah. man. Setting it up for a very spooky finals here as the rain and the wind comes down. This is the first mistake that we've seen from Odie Bakshi's all day. Just him being a little bit too aggressive. James Dean kind of reeling him into a trap, saying, all right, I'm going to throw it in, see if you can follow this. Odie does his best, but overcommits just a little bit. As, like Jared said, we are experiencing some incredible winds and incredible rain coming down now which is gonna set this final battle up for something. Holy cow. Something pretty wild. This is, uh, it's getting a little hairy out there. Look at that. Headlights are on, it's dark. Make some noise! Here we go. Again, James Dean, Simon Olsen. Olsen leads now coming down into the chute. Look at the puddles. This looks like a splash zone, not a drift zone. Going into that first outside zone. Here goes Simon Olsen spraying it, looking like a rooster tail. Into the second outside zone. One of the wettest events we've seen in years. James Dean, the Fonday Ford Mustang, as Simon Olsen goes in that.
that third outside zone. The rooster tail spray looking more like jet skis and boats that belong in the Long Beach water of the ocean yeah. around that final inside clip. Jacob. Yeah. That was insane. Let's go. Let's go get, I'm going to water ski behind that thing, dude. I'm, down. I'm right there with you. Dude, we can skimboard. Looking like Austin Keene out there, man. <laughs> Look at this thing. All right, run it back. What do you think? All right, crazy conditions, basically hydroplaning everywhere. Both drivers showing their expertise in the wet. Simon Olsen keeping everything under control. James Dean going, you know what? Let's get through that rooster tail. Let's see what we can do. James Dean getting right in the pocket of Simon Olsen, basically pushing him around the track. Simon Olsen saying, let's go one more time. Hit that door. As we come into our touch and go, Simon Olsen doing a phenomenal job. James Dean finding the last bit of grip that's left on this track, diving in through that inside clip. Man, this is gonna get wild. I have yeah. no idea how this is gonna go. Yeah, this is insane. And again, Simon Olsen just, we saw his first run in the wet and, and he just seems like he's, he's done this millions of times. And we know James has, again, we talked about, you know, him being from Ireland, but Again, the wind is brisk. Obviously, the rain is wet and the track is flooded. We haven't seen this kind of rain in years. I remember Jersey, actually, uh, notably, Robin Ishida has one of the best videos of him drifting uh, a Subaru and just, it, like, it was crazy. The rain, it, yeah. was, it was nuts. We're not dealing with smoke trails. We're dealing with rooster tails. They are spraying yeah. water like crazy. Looking like jet skis out there, cigarette boats. We, uh, we have one more half of battle to find out, or are we? Odie Bakshis locks in third place. And now we're looking for the winner. Definitely brisk right now. So who do we got? Now it'll be James Dean leading Simon Olsen. James Dean after a, quite a tumultuous week. The RTR camp, Von Gitt Jr. cheering him on. Ben Hobson making his pro debut, not making the cut into the 32. Remember, in just less than a month, we will be in Atlanta for round two. Here comes James Dean, the AutoZone Mustang RTR Spec 5 FD. The roasted marshmallow Mustang. A little bit of correction there from James Dean. Trying to go in that first outside zone. Simon oh. Olsen had a correction. James Dean hanging it out quite a bit. Here comes Simon Olsen. Get his first ever victory, maybe in Formula Drift. James Dean, good angle. Simon Olsen pedaling it with the proximity, almost impeding that and exceeding the front wheels. Here we go, bringing it on home into that final inside clip. Look at this, we got James Dean and Simon Olsen crawling their way across that finish line. What the heck is going on? What is this? What, what is this? I came to California for sunshine, and I came to what I got was an incredible battle in the wet. Absolutely. And the rain stops. Of course. <laughs> wow, let's take a look at this here again, man. All right, drone Justin still Smash there. is flying too. High risk, high reward, love it. James Dean out front, getting all that grip out there. Simon Olsen doing everything he can to keep up as they transition through that spray. James Dean grabbing the e-brake a little bit there, slowing the car down through the second outside zone. And Simon Olsen looks like James Dean of old, getting ahead of him, pushing him around, saying, look it, this is where you need to be. Pushing that car, and now we see James Dean with a straight line approach through that touch and go. Then we come through this inner clip, Simon Olsen doing everything he can yep. to get back in. So what we need to look at is, did James Dean make any mistakes in the lead? Did he go too hard? Did he do anything that was offline? Tons of angle through there. You can see the Type S underglow lighting up the rain underneath of it. And Simon Olsen pushing, waiting for James Dean to push ahead, to get going a little bit faster as he gets ahead of him just a little bit. And then James Dean filling all of outside zone three as they push through here. Man, I don't even care how slow it is. This is epic. I love these battles. Like, you can see, like Simon Olsen just chomping at the bit, wanting to get James to go faster. I've got more grip in this car than you yep. do. Comes back to bite him a little bit, but wow. Yeah, it got a little sketchy there on outside zone three. You know, we'll see if we have a winner. We know Odie Box, he's locks in third, so field suspension, two two carbon fiber trophies here in Long Beach. RTR is getting one as well. They, you know, finished the champion. They got three, they, they, you know, three in a row last year. They were on a tear collectively as a team. And obviously Chelsea took it all the way. All right. So it looks like we... Our judges right now, we are... Uh... 
We're wading through some puddles to get back to the, uh, the judging devices here so we can get a decision in. Vernon may have blown away in the wind. We're not sure. We're looking for him. Everybody give it up for your finalists here in Long Beach! Make some noise for him. One, two, and three. Again, feel suspension. Two drivers on the box. We got, we got fans screaming one more time. They don't want to go home. Make some noise. James Dean, Simon Olsen, here he comes. Odie Bakshis. Wet, wacky, wild event, round one. Remember, in just under a month, we'll be at round two at Road Atlanta. Look at the smiles here. Simon's laughing. Oh man, James Dean, look at this. Absolutely elated, what a crazy event. Jumping out of his car, make some noise for him. Field suspension captain, Odie Bakshis. Odie Bakshis. All right, let's get, let's get this going. Finishing third place here at round one. The streets of Long Beach, AutoZone, presented by Type S in the field suspension. GT Radio Vortex Supercharged S15, third place, Odie Bakshis! We have seen so much things going on. Remember, in just under a month, join us at round two, Road Atlanta. Jacob, here we go. And our winner here at round one, which started out as a dry event, is now rainy and windy. And your winner here at round one, the streets of Long Beach, AutoZone, presented by Type S is unanimously James the Machine Dean! James Dean, after being on fire on Tuesday and now in the rain, the flames are extinguished, RTR ready to rebuild, gets the win at round one, and the points championship heats up after it literally heats up under the hood, now cooled down, and of course, second place, second place, field suspension, S14 from Norway, make some noise, Simon Olsen! It was close, oh, man. it was a close battle, Jacob, and again, just everything that that gentleman has gone through this week, from, again, from October to now, there it is, Ben Hobson, his teammate cheering him on, Odie Box, she says, congratulations. Lorette Nickel, he's, I mean, are, I'm not crying. No, that's just rain. Lorette, down to you with our winner. Uh, I think we're all a little teary-eyed. James Dean, what an incredible weekend. You immediately fell to the floor, the emotions just pouring out of you. How do you even encapsulate? How do you put this into words? I, I have no words, like no, I don't think, only probably my very close friends, my family and, and Becky know how, how much this means to me. Oh, I can't believe it. Thank you to the team, my fans, my family, my partner, everyone, Vaughn, the whole team that supported me, brought me back to FD. It was hard last year, but I was determined to come back and no matter what, Came in our way this week, we overcame it. The team never gave up, I never gave up. We got Irish condi conditions and uh, we made the most of it, but that's, that's probably the most emotional win since my last win in Long Beach was my first win in FD, so oh my God. Woo! <laughs> and James, let's talk about the tenacity of your team, because not only did you not give up, your team never gave up. They never gave up one for one second. Like, Ray Shelby, everyone that just, Andy, sleeping, sleepless nights to get me back on track, never give up. And uh, I was looking so bleak when we were looking at this car on Tuesday evening and it looked almost impossible. And uh, uh, you never give up, you never give up. I didn't give up, I tried my best to make everyone proud. The conditions were extremely hard. Every single lap you did, it just felt different and it was hard to be repeatable, but oh, we did it. <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, James Dean. Woo, you're a winner here in Long Beach with a very excited Robert coming in for a hug. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Jacob. What an event. Uh, you know, just everything he's gone through. I, I, I kind of choked up there. Just, you know, you know what these guys are going through. Traveling for one, then going up. You're pushed against the wall. Your car catches on fire. Uh, you make the highlight reel in not the way you want to, and it all comes together. Yeah, and this is just what we see on the outside. There's so much more behind the scenes that, that we don't know what's going on. Those late nights, I mean, stories of people packing bags full of parts just to get them here, but ultimately, at the end of the day, James Dean put together an incredible set of runs as we look through this last one. I mean, he's able to keep his composure. Simon Olsen doing everything he can to to try and keep everything under control, but James Dean just absolutely perfect in the swimming pool. <laughs> oh man, just, yeah, and, and the emotions. Oh. Yeah, unbelievable. Jacob, Jacob, thank you so much, brother. And uh, again, we're not, we're not done just yet because again, look at Simon Olsen with that hug. He was that close to get his first ever win, but RTR, I mean, everybody's deserving of it, but feel suspension two and three on the podium. Don't go anywhere. We're still partying here in Long Beach. Drifting, everything's a mental game. Boom! Perfect. You're not focused. You're off your game. Ryan Turk is back at it. He wants it. performance racing, battle tested in formula drift for the last four years. XPR contains center look additive technology, ultimate ZDDP wear protection, and superior high temp performance. Core purple, royal purple, the synthetic expert. Drifting is not just a sport, it's culture, it's in our blood. It's a fine line that you have to walk. You have to be able to adapt on the fly and be able to drive on your instinct. Tires are what we live and breathe in Formula D. We couldn't do this without them. Formula Drift is brought to you by Kumo Tire and Fast Orange, the official hand cleaner of Formula Drift. GoPro, the world's most versatile camera. Discount Tire Centers, California's number one family owned tire and service center. Wow, what an event here. You can see Team RTR still down there celebrating. It's cold, it's windy, but th this gentleman was built for it, obviously. You know, James Machining puts it together, you know, second place. Simon Olsen just a bit outside of getting his first ever win, but field suspension, you know, throws a little extra sauce on it, and they get two and three overall at round one, the AutoZone Streets of Long Beach, presented by Type Fast, and here it is. 
The championship hunt is on, Jacob. James Dean leads the pack. Olsen, Odie, Gucci, Osbo, look at that. Yeah. I mean, just shaking things up. RCP, no back. Manoa, 14 years old. Matt Field finishes ninth. And Ryan Turk in 10th. Rounding it out. Forsberg, Taguchi, Her, Sorensen, and Thorne. I mean, what just what a collection. Yeah, no, it's it's great, especially to see Manoa, I mean, up at that point. It's 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 awesome. I mean, we're hanging in there. We're hanging in there. What a yeah. what a great way to start the season. I'm bundled up as much as I can. You got you got the facial hair to keep your face warm. <laughs> I, I got nothing. But man, what a what a what a yeah. weekend, man. Yeah. Ver oh. Vernon, Marin got thrown in, you know, Reese Marin got thrown in, Egger and uh, you know, Robin Ishida are still in it. Um, welcome up to the booth. What a way to start. Chris Yule, as far as logistics. Ryan Sage, he's still shivering over here. And, uh, you know, overall, what what an event. You know, we saw all the elements. From the fire, oh boy, uh, from the fire on Tuesday to the rain here now and talking about rain, the Irish rain. Yeah. You know, um, Connor Shanahan, you know, little, little thrown off, a little kerfuffled, but overall, what a crazy event. And there's still seven rounds left to go. So join us at round two. Anything else you want to add? Uh, hopefully the round two is a little warmer. <laughs> That's it. Well, Atlanta, anything can happen, and uh, it, it usually does. So thank you so much to our crew. Thank you to all the drivers. Thank you to all the sponsors. Year 21, it begins now. And James Dean, the three-time champion, leads the pack as we head from the streets of Long Beach to where the red dirt of Road Atlanta meets the asphalt of the iconic track where it all began in 2004. We're going to keep this party going that is called Formula Drift. On behalf of, on behalf of Lorette Nickel, Jacob Gettins, I'm Jared Dienda. We'll see you guys at round two of the Formula Drift Pro Championship at Road Atlanta. We'll see you online and we'll see you another time. Send it.